today we want to talk on the topic why obey or the blessing of obedience why obey the blessing of obedience God takes us into a journey of obedience I call it the tunnel of obedience he takes us through a journey of obedience and obedience makes life easy rebellion makes your life a nightmare obedience makes your life easy but rebellion makes your life a, li a nightmare but it all comes to choices that you have to make you have a part to play in every blessing that you receive there are two keys in life. The two keys, one key is known as the key of obedience. The other one is the key of disobedience. And it is not your neighbor. It is in your hand to obey. Praise the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 9 to 16, he talks about when the Lord is saying that the Lord your God will make you abound in all the good works all good works of your hand and in the fruit of your body in the increase of your livestock in the produce of your hand for good for the lord will again rejoice over you for a good for good uh, for for good as he rejoiced over your fathers if you obey the voice of the lord your god to take his command praise the lord the reading goes on, but it's all about what? Obedience. Deuteronomy, a few chapters earlier, from chapter 30, you go back two chapters, you find Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses, uh, from verse 1 to 14. It talks of the many things that comes because of the blessing of obedience. Buenas y fiwe. Obedience has a blessing. He says, verse 2, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, and all those blessings that shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Praise the Lord. Buona si fiwe. At this point, I'd like to ask you, who is overtaking you? Or what is trying to overtake you? Is it calamity? Is it problems? Or is it blessings? I pray that blessings will be the ones that want to overtake you. Bwana sifiwe. Yani umeblesiwa. Oh, Sean, that is Sean. But let me just finish the sentence, then I will explain. Umeblesiwa hapa, na ukienda pale mbele, unapata another blessing. And you continue receiving blessings, because blessing continue following you, and overtaking you. But there are people who have calamity here. They go up there, they receive another calamity, and another, and another, until you wonder, eh, what is running after me? What is this? Praise the Lord. When calamity is pursuing you and wants to overtake you, it is tough. I'd rather have blessings over to following me and overtaking me because I'm obedient. And so these are some of the things that the Lord is promising. In chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, he says there will be favor. I've put the, 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 the numbers of the verses in, in, in pairs so that at least it can flow. Verse number three of that chapter and verse no, number six are the blessings of favor and acceptance. He says, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. You will be blessed in the city and in the country. There are some people who are blessed only in the country and not in the city. There are some that are blessed only in the, in the country and not in the city. Let us be blessed in both sides because of the favor of the Lord and of the obedience. Then verse 6 says, blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Going out and coming in, blessing shall be waiting for you. This is favor and acceptance. Then there is a blessing of multiplication. You will find increase. In other words, you'll be multiplied in many things, but many good things. 
verses 4 and 5 says, Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Multiplication shall come after you. These are blessings that will overtake you. Why? Because you are obedient. Praise the Lord. Blessings of obedience. Then there is a blessing of protection. The blessing of protection. That one is in verse 7. He says the Lord will cause. The Lord will cause. Praise the Lord. When the Lord is going to cause something. In other words, he will make. He will let it come to pass. That your enemies who rise against you. Let me tell you whether you are the sweetest man on earth, you'll have enemies. Hello? Or whether you are the most beautiful lady on earth, you will have enemies. Even if you are very kind, you just smile to everybody, you will have enemies. But he says, your enemies who rise against you, to be, they will be caused to be defeated before your face. In other words, in full sight, you will be seeing them as they are getting defeated. They shall come out against you in one way, but they will be scattered in seven different directions. I've seen when, what it means to scatter. One time, we were traveling to the village, and uh, we had uh, to change some tires. Then the person who was to change the tires to bring us the good tires did not come in good time. So we waited. And when the tires came, they were all changed and everything. And so we take, took off a bit late, around from, from 1 a.m. And we were uh, 1 p.m. And we were going. We were going to the village. We reached home when it was a bit dark. Actually, it was almost 8 or 9.30 there, 9. And as we arrived in the village, we arrived uh, late. And as we were going through those vichochoros, the, 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 the small paths with the car, we reached a place where we had around 30 young people clustered all over. They were all over the, the, the room, the route. I don't know where they were going. I didn't know who they were. But they were all over the place. They were filling the road and they didn't seem to have any urge to move from the road. And so, uh, praise the Lord, I had a car. This, this car of ours had this big beam of flashlight or light on top. And that big beam was there. I didn't, I'm not the one who put it there. It was pimped that way by the time I was buying it. Bonus if you will. And so I decided to put on that big light. And so I put it on. And let me tell you, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen 30 people scatter. <laughs> they scattered. I did not know what they thought this car was or whatever, but their scattering was that one that even if a bush is sunny, you just go through it. <laughs> and there was a scattering. <laughs> and I looked at them and marveled. And then I realized they are still going. And I was wondering where they were going. And I put on the side beams. And again, they kept on running. Anyway, to, <laughs> to cut the long story short, I saw what it means that they will scatter in seven different directions. These people scattered in, not even in seven. So they scattered, and as, it, as they scattered, I realized this is how the Lord is saying, your enemies who come against you shall scatter. Praise the Lord. So when we talk about obeying God, obeying God gives you something that you cannot imagine. There is protection, there is multiplication, 
and there is favor in obeying God. And last but not least, not last but not least, but second last to that, is staying, there will be something known as the staying blessing. Blessings that stay. Blessings shall stay, we see them in chapter 9, in verse 9. The Lord will establish you as a holy people. Establishment means you are set in place and you are unshakable. You are in a place where you are founded. In other words, it is not something that is here today and it is not there tomorrow. Says he will establish you as a people, as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandment. Then all people of the earth, it shall be rumored, and all over the earth it shall be said, it shall be said, see that you are called by his name. They will say that one is serving a God, and his God is more powerful. Because of what? Because you are established. When they see you, they see blessings. And they'll always be referring to you as, a, as, a, as an icon of blessing. It's not that you're blessed today. You have nothing. You'll be established. So this is what the Lord is saying. Last but not least, verse 12 and 13 says, Whatever you need, I, 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 I've... I've, I've headed it this way, that whatever you need in heaven, need, heaven shall release to make your life easy. Heaven shall release. The Lord says, the Lord will open to you his good treasures, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the works of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above and on, only and not beneath. If you heed his command, Praise the Lord. So when we look at all this, we realize that God has promised and is promising to bless us if we obey. Obedience is faith in the one that is commanding. And in that kind of obedience, we see Abel. Abel obeyed. And Abel gave from his the firstborn of his flock to God when it was time to sacrifice. But then you realize that Cain, who did not give his best, who could not slaughter any animal, and I know he had, because those days wealth was counted according to the flocks you have, he got some fruit from the ground and gave. And this is what happened to, Abel, to, to Cain. Cain's sacrifice was rejected, but Abel's obedience was accepted. Another person who obeyed and we see his blessing was Abraham. Abraham's obedience in following the Lord, the Lord told him that everybody who I will, in blessing, I will bless you. I will bless you. The Lord is saying, I will, I will bless you and I will curse him who curses you. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. And in your seed, in your family, Many families shall be blessed on earth. In other words, your descendants shall not only be there, but they will be very powerful that even your enemies shall not have opportunity to mess with them. Praise the Lord. I thank God we are descendants of Abraham. Isaac also obeyed. And in Isaac's obedience, he sowed in the land, that is in Egypt, and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the Lord began to prosper him. Actually, the last verse explains what happens. The king of, the king of that land, known as Abimelech, said, Isaac, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. In other words, you are killing us with jealousy. We are seeing too much blessings on you. Because of your obedience, go. We'd rather not see how the Lord has blessed you than look at it and marvel. 
Another person who had a challenge of obedience was Naaman. Naaman and a, 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 Syrian, a Syrian general, commander in the army, he had leprosy. And then he went to Elisha to be, to be, to be, to be, to be healed. But he was not healed the way he wanted. Then he was told, you go and wash in River Jordan. River Jordan, for your information, is a very dirty river. River Jordan reminded me of Nairobi River. It's a water that you cannot see through. But guess what? Naaman was told to go and wash himself there. And he almost disobeyed until his servant begged him. And his servant came near and spoke to him, saying, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when, we say to, when he says to you, wash and be clean? And so he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Praise the Lord. Obedience sometimes looks stupid. It looks stupid. It looks out of this place. You, you think... I, I should be asked to do greater things or mightier things. But when God is calling you to be obedient, he's actually calling you, calling you to do something very simple that is the key to your blessing. I have several questions here and some examples of disobedience. When last did you use the key of obedience? You don't have to, but your life will be more easier if you use this key. You need it even if you may pretend that you need nothing and that you are self-sufficient. There are people, when you tell them to obey, they say, no, why should I? They want to go another direction. Aren't you tired of using the key of rebellion? And why do this, why do this to yourself? It does not only cost you, but it costs a family. An example of people who disobeyed God and their families who were destroyed is King Saul. He died with his family, slaughtered by an Amalekite whom he was told to finish. But instead, he left them. Ali Wacha change. He left some change. And the Amalekite was the one who killed him. The one he spared killed him. Eli, the priest, he did not teach his children obedience. And in one day, all his children died. And his daughter-in-law gave birth to a child whose name was Ichabod. But he was so used by God. You know, Eli was used by God to release Anna from barrenness. But his daughter... So the, Anna was released from barrenness. He gave birth to Samuel. His daughter was, gave birth to Ichabod. And Eli did not even see his, father, his, uh, his, his child, his daughter-in-law's child so for long. Because he somersaulted and fell down, he broke his neck and he died. The same day, his children died. Disobedience affects our children, it affects us, and it affects everybody. But the key is in your hand. Obey and prosper. Obey and increase. My, my, my friends and my, my brothers and my sisters, it is only good that we walk in obedience so that we may prosper, so that we may walk in protection, so that we may walk in multiplication, so that we may walk in favor, so that we may walk in staying blessings. Buona sifiwe. Let us pray. My God and my Father, help us. Any place where we have forgotten that obedience is a key 
that blesses us, that causes us to walk in acceptance, that causes us to walk in favor, that causes us to walk in multiplication. Father, help us not to forget. And let us obey you more and also obey authority that we will not take authority for granted. We ask this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen.